Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Short Fiction. Uh, doing another video today, which will be our 600th video of 2018. And we're just now, I want to say about 10 videos shy of 1,600 uploads in our channel's history. So it's a cool milestone coming up here. Uh, yeah, so today we're looking at a classic short story from legendary late science fiction author Ray Bradbury. I began reading Ray Bradbury very young. I remember, you know, turning over the pages of The Martian Chronicles and Fahrenheit 457, um, probably before I was even ready to be reading that stuff. But um, he was always an interesting author to me because he, his stuff was, I think it was accessible to children, but of course any good fiction is appropriate for all ages and um, even reading it to this day you find more and more themes that he was tackling and almost like a prophet so much of what he uh, was coming up with 70 years ago or more is proving more accurate than you would imagine. Alright guys so um, this story is The Velt. I did not come across it until college. It happened to be in this volume of uh, literature that we used for, I want to say, my 20th century lit course. I don't think we actually covered it there, but um, since then I've read it several times and I've found it to be one of my favorites of his. Uh, the Vell originally titled The World the Children Made. Uh, the original version came out in 1950, but it was re-released a year later as The Vell um, in 1951's short story collection The Illustrated Man and Other Stories. Uh, so this is the story of parents George and Lydia Hatley, who live in what is called a happy life home, a sort of smart smart home, <clears throat> very similar to what we're building today, really, um, with all of these different devices and gadgets that do things for you. The house talks to you, it cleans for itself, uh, but there's other things like it cooks for you, bathes you, ties your damn shoes because you are lazy. <laughs> um, but the, um, the centerpiece of the house is what is called the nursery, which is a sort of virtual reality 3D environment that creates scents and smells and sounds and lights um, that sort of, uh, it sort of reads your, your child's mind or your mind and projects what you are imagining into reality. Um, the Hadley children are named uh, appropriately, actually, uh, Wendy and Peter, just like the characters from, the Peter, from Peter Pan. Uh, they began using it um, a year earlier, as you would expect from children. Uh, they're recreating uh, things from, from children's stories and from mythology. Uh, the Wizard of Oz, Wonderland, Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride. Um, there's Pegasus flying around and things like that. But a year later, um, some problems start to show up because uh, they're taking an imaginative turn for <laughs> far more darker material. Uh, they They begin to imagine the nursery land as being an African veldt or savanna, savanna land populated by long grass, hot sun, um, of course the classic watering hole where all the animals come to, and then of course the king of the, um, not king of the jungle, but um, <laughs> actually lions. There's actually a pack of man-eating lions in their nursery. Uh, the parents, uh, who are sort of increasingly isolated by um, this house, you know, all this technology that sort of separates from the, from their children makes them feel useless. Um, excuse me. Leaves them feeling increasingly paranoid. They sort of sense that they can smell the lions um, from down the hall when they're working in their offices and um, they'll go in and, you know, they'll see lions in the distance and, you know, like, what are they eating? Um, and, you know, it's, and they could never quite see what it is and they're hearing screams and they're finding um, bloody items um, on the floor of the nursery. And uh, when, it, when asked about it originally, the kids sort of deny it, um, but eventually they sort of fess up. And uh, Mr. Hadley is, he's concerned, so he threatens to take it away and um, to turn off the house, to turn off all this machinery and maybe try living, um, living like normal human beings again. And of course, this enrages the children who are, you know, like gamers today, who are addicted to their screens. And uh, so he calls in his friend, the psychologist, um, to take a look. And basically, he comes up with the idea that, uh, you know, for for quite a while, they were spoiling the kids, sort of treating, sort of being a Santa Claus. And now, now he's being sort of a Scrooge, and he's taking things away from them. Um, he's telling them no. I mean, how dare a parent tell their children no? 
and the kids are retaliating. Uh, but unlike, I hope in our world today, though I think maybe this is changing, um, uh, the kids have a little bit more power than they probably should. <laughs> you know, it's probably not quite as easy to um, to deal with them as as you would expect. Uh, but he he finally, um, after the last incident in the in the nursery, he comes in close and yeah, we're turning the house off. Uh, we're getting out of here. We're going on vacation. We're gonna rough it for a month or so and uh, sort of get back to living instead of being um, doted over by machines all the time. And when he he does this, the children just go berserk. Uh, but he's trying to pack his bags, get ready to go. Uh, he says, "Okay." Um, uh, his psychologist friend's coming back. He's gonna help us pack uh, and shut place down in a little bit. Um, you can have one more minute in it um, before we go. Um, he just does that to, to satisfy the kids. He shut them up. Well, um, <laughs> when when they're given that minute and um, uh, the psychiatrist eventually returns, he's looking for the parents, George and Lydia, who are apparently missing. And the children say, "Oh, uh, they'll they'll be along." They'll be along shortly. Come join us here in the savannah and in, in the veld. And uh, would you like some tea? And and off in a distance, the the lions are by the uh, the watering hole, and they're um, they're looking for something to eat, um, or they're eating. And meanwhile, uh, the psychiatrist is being uh, surrounded on all sides by the un incoming pack of lions. Uh, and then that brings the story to an end. Uh, yeah, it's a great story. I think. It's probably been adapted in some way or another. I don't have that pulled up just now. Let me check. Um, adaptations, let's see. Um, yeah, um, it has been adapted for movies on several occasions. Uh, it looks like it really hasn't happened recently. Um, um, but th th this, this kind of story, I think, is primed, and it's prime real estate uh, for modern film and TV adaptations. Um, so I would expect to see something like that in the future because it's, it's that good. Um, but there's several interesting themes going on here. I think the first thing to, um, to bring up is uh, the Peter and Wendy is the names of the children. That is an obvious Peter Pan connection. And, you know, Peter Pan, you know, that, that is a story about, you know, um, a kid who doesn't want to grow up and yet he's engaging in things that are um, they're imaginative, but they're a whole lot darker than um, than you would would have expected from a children's book. And I think that certainly echoes this story as well, um, but even on a darker level than maybe Peter Pan ever was. Um, I think another big theme here is this overdependence on gadgets. Um, we've sort of fallen into that here in our own world, and you know, there's a lot of talk about people. You know, um, you, know you give up Facebook or you. Um, uh, close down your Twitter account or you decide to, I'm, I'm not going to use my cell phone for a, a week or a month or, um, you know, there really is this sort of growing unplugging or uh, get unplugged culture emerging. And I think this, it, it's beautiful that this was a cautionary tale about that very thing, but it was written 70 years ago. I mean, that's sort of incredible. I mean, what, what gadgets did people have in reality 70 years ago? Yes, you were getting like, you know, electric mixers and refrigerators and, um, you know, first TVs would be coming soon and, and things like that. But of course there was more, um, there was more obvious technology going on with cars and airplanes and bombs and things like that. But, um, yeah, um, so much of what Bradbury and his contemporaries came up with, um, so long ago is, it's becoming shockingly real. You don't know which, um, was it they were visionaries or has their writing informed um, the imaginations of today's inventors? Um, could go either way. It probably does go both ways. But yeah, guys, that is The Velt by Ray Bradbury, um, published in 1950, 1951. It's a great story. It's five, six pages. It's a quick read. Um, I actually, um, I looked up on YouTube real quick and there's a, several versions of it in audiobook form, uh, but you can listen to Leonard Niboy reading it, which is fantastic. So I recommend doing that if that's the only way you have to access. I like to um, to listen to these stories being recited while reading along. I think it's probably the best way to go about it. Um, helps you really um, dive into the characters and it, I think it improves your comprehension, you know. Um, 
like any any good good story sort of requires a little bit more close reading, maybe going back and double checking and you know sort of teasing out um, what things mean. Uh, but yeah, there's certainly uh, plenty to chew on here in this uh, this great little tale by Ray Bradbury. So, hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, please give this video a thumbs up. And uh, if you have not done so already, please subscribe. We need eight or nine more subscribers to hit our 500 subscriber goal uh, here before the end of the year, which is coming up uh, just a little over a month away. Can't believe uh, uh, December is coming so soon. Oh, and one quick reminder, um, as I did uh, mention yesterday in that uh, channel update, um, do have a busy um, real life workload coming up here soon, so it may impact some of my um, my free time for, for um, reading and um, getting out reviews for you like that. However, I do plan to continue to do um, videos during that time, probably a lot of workday vlogs and things like that, and then I'll um, see what I can get done on the weekends as well. So. Uh, once again, uh, thank you, and I'll see you soon.